Illinois, the northern state and southern state. So you move along just fine. Alternate side in effect citywide through tomorrow. Traffic sponsored by Duck, Duck, Go, Hello. I have made a system for recording audio using ESP32 and IMP441 among the projects I did before. This time, I will create an app that saves and plays audio data as a wave file through Bluetooth serial on mobile. Let's get started. This is a diagram of today's project. This ESP32 works in task units based on FreeRQS. First, when you send a start string from the app, ESP32 starts the recording task. Instead of storing recording data inside ESP32, it sends the byte data to the app via Bluetooth serial. By doing this, you can record for a long time as much as your phone memory is available. When the app sends a stop string, it removes the recording task and stand by again and waiting for the next recording. Let's start with the part needed for the Bluetooth serial. Let's include the Bluetooth serial header and now you can use the Bluetooth Serial object. My Bluetooth device name is ESP32 Recorder. If Bluetooth initialization fails, restart ESP32. The most important thing is the Bluetooth callback function. It's absolutely necessary when clients are connected or receive data. This callback feature is key to this project. Let's finish the Bluetooth initialization quickly and create a callback function. The Bluetooth callback function has two parameters. One is for the type of event. The other one is for data. So you can figure out the data based on the type of event. For example, you can get the MAC address of the connected client if it occurs sub-open event. When the sub-open event occurs, it means the client is connected. When data even occurs, it means data comes from the connected client. Since the second parameter has not only byte data but also the length of data, we can use it in what we want. Let's turn byte data from the client app into the string. Since we already know the length of the string, we will use it to create a character array. Increase the size of the array by 1 in order to insert the null character at the end. From the string copy function, the new character array fills with the source's characters as much as its length. And insert a null value at the end of the array to create a perfect string. Now we can compare the string to execute the function of the start recording function or finish recording function. The function has not been created yet, so we will comment on it. Let's not forget to register a callback function just we made. Let's build. No problem. Let's check the connected ESP32 and unload it. My ESP32 is normally initialized and waits for the client connection. Bluetooth based programming is done. Now let's connect the I2S microphone. This is the ESP32 connected with INMP441. I didn't organize the wires separately. Also for source code related to INMP441, I will refer to the project of part 4 capturing audio from I2S mic. If you need more details for the I2S project, please check my previous videos about it. It's gonna save lots of time for this video. I'm gonna copy and paste the source code for INMP441 from the previous project which is capturing audio from I2S mic to save WAV file. You can find the link from the below description. I will copy only the part I need quickly. All settings are the same as the previous project. The number of channel is 1, the sampling rate is 16,000, the bytes per sample is 16. The I2S init function is to initialize for not only configuration but also driver install for I2S. The I2S ADC data scale function is to increase the volume. The output of the I2S is zero data so we need to have a byte operation for it. It's getting byte data from I2S ADC function. In the previous project, we saved the data from I2S in SPI fresh file system. But in this project, we'll send it directly to the client via Bluetooth serial. 
Let me delete the duplicated ITS read RAM. The ITS read RAM is already defined. You've copied it the very first time. Also, we don't use the file system, so remove it. Since the beginning and end of the recording are called from a different task, we need to make the record purpose a global variable. I'm removing unnecessary parts related to the file and create a separate function to clean up the buffers. The function ITS cancel also gonna be one of the tasks. When recording stop comes in from the app, the function will be called. If you stop immediately when the stop button is pressed from the app, the content in the buffer will be lost. Thus, remove the recording task after 2 seconds. Also, we need to uninstall the ITS driver at this time. Let's delete this ITS cancel task using vtask delete. As I said, we have to delete the recording task in the I2S cancel function. So we need to register a task handler for I2S ADC to delete the recording task. Let's complete the two functions. These functions are called by the command from the app. When the recording is started, it's necessary to initialize the buffers and execute the I2S ADC task with the task handler. You can control this task from another task using this task handler. Oh, I almost forgot to add the ampersand in front of the task handler. In the finishing recording part, all we have to do is create I2S cancel task. Let's assign the risk size to the stack because it doesn't do anything special. Let me change DMA buffer size and count. Previously, I had a large allocation of DMA buffer as much as possible. However, this causes problems when used with Bluetooth, so set to the default value. Go back to the I2S ADC, write by to Bluetooth instead of to file. Go back to the I2S console, delete I2S ADC task. Go back to the I2S ADC again. Let I2S ADC allow writing byte data in Bluetooth serial without any conditions. Also, don't forget to store I2S in it in the I2S ADC. Let's build and done. This has cleaned up the hardware part. Please refer to the previous I2S videos for my insufficient explanation. Before going to Flutter, based on the previous project Bluetooth serial for USB 32 cam, I will fix and add functions to make an audio recording application. I'm gonna show you how to download the specific folder from the GitHub repository. Please copy the link of the folder you want to download. Open your editor and paste it. Modify the tree master to trunk. If you don't have SVN, please do googling and install it. Go to the terminal, execute the SVN checkout with the modified URL. Then it downloads the whole files in the folder. And open this folder with Android Studio or Visual Studio code. If there is a problem with the project that has been downloaded from the internet, you will need to check if the paths of the Dart and Flutter are properly. Finally, run pubget to download the required libraries. After running pubget, if you see the message pubget has not been run, then click the ignore on the top right of the screen. You can also download the source code of the audio recording app. If there is a problem, please download and use it. Let's begin. On the right of my screen, the real device is mirrored. First thing I want to do is changing the name of the app bar. Let's do it with the ESP32 voice recorder. For the test, let's run it. It has been built, and you can check that the name of the app bar has been changed. Let's press the setting button to connect ESP32. You can connect the ESP32 recorder and it's paired. Go back to the app, click the ESP32 recorder to make a connection. The previous layout comes out. If we check the console of the Arduino ID, it says also client connected. We don't need any selection options, so let's delete the drop down menu. 
We don't need not only drop down menu but also photo view for audio recorder, so delete them. After modifying the rail, Hot Reload allows you to see the changes without build. Go to the Pulse Pack YAML, clean up too. For now, we don't need the Progress HUD. Let me delete it too. All unnecessary parts have been removed. For audio recording, we must know the recording status. Let's make it with numerated types. It has only two status, stopped and recording. The default recording status is already stopped. Go to the shop button on press the event. Depending on the current state, the execution will vary when the button is pressed. If it's currently stopped, send start, otherwise stop. Also, I will change the text of the button according to the status. After sending a message to ESP32, it changes the current status. Start is to be recorded and stop is to be stopped. After changing the status, refresh the screen to change the text of the button. Set state. Instead of draw image, let's change it to complete byte. Let me print out the content length here. Remove the selected frame size variable that we no longer need. Right? Let's build and check what we have done. The app is connected to ESP32 and let's press the record button. The message from the app is start, therefore recording begins. Where the never used stack size shows the amount of the unused memory. The closer it is to zero, the more efficient it is being used. However, if it's less than zero, memory overflow will occur and the system will reboot. So be careful at all times. In the app, you can also see that the data is being sent well through the Bluetooth serial. When stop is reached, you can see the data is no longer sent in 2 seconds later. This is a trick to include what's in the buffer. Now we confirm that we are sending and receiving data well. Now it's time to create a real WAV file. To create a WAV file, we must also create a file header. Let's create a new dot file called wave header. I need to use the dot convert and dart type data in this class, so let's add them. As you can see on the right screen, the header is used to provide specification of the file type, sample age, sample size, and bit size of the file as well as its overall length. The format of the file header is defined as 44 bytes long. So just so we can add the header data with the information we set up in ESP32. Have you seen what I did in ESP32 for making a wave file header? I made one by each and put it in. Let me show you how to make it in Dart language. First, I will create a static function that changes the string value to byte. Easily convert strings with byte array using ASCII encoder. I will return the byte list from the create wave header function. Let's start with lift string which is chunk ID. First, convert the lift string with byte. You know the length of the string, so store each element to the byte list after changing this byte to unsigned 8-bit integer type one by one within four loops. I know it's bothering you, but I have to do. Next, I save the chunk size. I'm simply using a formula that a data length plus Header size which is 44 bytes and minus 8 bytes. This time, you must save the value in the reader endian format. Change to that and save chunk size. Change it from the for root to unsigned 8 bit integer type and add one by one to the byte list. Complete 44 bytes in the same way. For your information, if you want to see the hex value instead of a decimal, just add dot to radix string 16 at the end of get you into 8. Also, these file header parameters are the same as the file header created in ESP32.
The length of the byte list should be 44. Return the byte list. Let's try to save the file locally. To save files in the app internal document folder, you must first take the path to the app document directory. Also, you must add the library called the path provider. Go to the Flutter pub, find the path provider, import it to your project. Getting a path and making file is working as a sync. So all functions need an async keyword to wait for it. After taking the path to the document folder, create a file in the date format. For the date format, you need to add the library intl. Let's create a file name format. It's gonna be year, month, day, and represent current time. A file is created with the combination of the path and file name. The file's extension is wave, of course. To use the file, you must add the Dart IO. Go back to the complete byte function. When the recording is done, creating a file. Also, this function should have a async keyword for file. Adding the header list to the created file and paste the actual sound data. The file mode is append. Let's print out the size of the finished file. Alright, all looks good. Build again. App is up. A connecting. Starting recording. Stop recording. The major header length is 44. And the total size of the created wave file is around 270 kilobyte. All functions are working properly. Let's reconfigure the screen layout. It's necessary to show a list of files stored inside the app. I will inherit and create the list tile to display the file list. The path to the files is required first. You can use this path to play audio later. It also shows the file size. There are two events, tab event and wrong press event. Tab event will play the file and wrong press will remove the file. I will add two icons at the beginning and at the end to put it in. Go back to the detail page. Import the file entity list tile dot file. Create a list of file system entity types so that you can put a list of files. Let's make a list of file function. All files in the app's internal documents folder are fetched via directory path. When this function is called, it first deletes all items in the files list. Fetching only files in this directory that contain wave in the file name. Using insert 0 to place the most recent file in the first position. Go to the init state, add the list of files function here. Go to the build function. The current background color is black, so change it to white. Add a list view from the body. The list view wraps will expand it to take up all the space other than the record button. The files list already contains all the file information. Create a list that returns the file entity list style with this information. Good. Let me try this version. The first saved wave file is shown on the screen. When you touch an item, the untap event is called. If it's wrong, on wrong press event is called. I forgot one thing. After saving the file, you must also invoke the list of the files function to update the newly saved file on the screen. Let's try again. Start recording. End recording. When you finish recording and the new file is saved, 
you can see it being added to the screen. Because the restore the file function redraw the screen, set state is not required here. Remove it. When the recording is begins, I will create a recording screen using dialog to provide a screen which is different from the other screens. As usual, add this library to your popspec YAML. And then import the slide pop-up dialog dart. I will make a simple layout. The barrier dismissable is to make it dismiss when touching the out of the dialog. I will not allow this because it should stop it first. Create a column to add text recording, circle progress indicator, and stop button. To change the color of the circle progress indicator, you have to change the value color. Let's complete as as possible. The size box height is for making gap between widgets in the column. To make a button on a round edge, the rounded rectangle border is necessary. When this button is pressed, send the stop message and dismiss this dialog with the navigator pop. Go back to the shop button function, call the show recording dialog function when it started. Let's build and try this one. When the recording is started, you can see the slide dialog showing up. Looks better. There is one more thing. We have to wait for about 2 seconds after pressing the stop button because the data transmission is not finished yet. It would be good to show HUD until the transmission is complete. Let's edit. I used this HUD in my previous project. I think you guys are also familiar with it too. Let's add it quickly. When the stop button is pressed in the slide dialog, the HUD will be displayed. Go to the complete byte function and dismiss this HUD. That's it. It's simple. Let's try again. After recording, you can see that the HUD remains until the last transmission. Now let's complete the audio file player. This is probably the simplest part. I will create a variable called selected file path to see which file I played it before. Also create file audio player. Go to the list view on tab. If the path of the currently selected file is the same as the selected file path, start the current audio player. If the path of the selected file is different from the selected file path and the file exists, play the selected file with the audio player. On long press, checking for a file, directed and call the list of files to redo the screen. That's it. Let's try it again. Unfortunately, nothing was recorded because I'm currently working in a quiet environment, but it's playing well. I will show you the recording and playing later. Let's press the item for a long time and delete it. If we quickly press and hold two items, it seems that all list has been removed. This is a bug. This problem occurred because the screen was redrawn when there was no file entries when the restore file function was called at the same time. Let's revise this part. Go back to the wrong press event. Instead of calling list of file function, just delete item in the file list. And redraw screen with set state. That's it. It's over. Let's rebuild and check. Since there are no recorded files, I will quickly create three files. I quickly delete three files. It's working. The programming of today's project is finished. Thank you all for your hard work. Let's see the real test. Oh, and taste of the fruit or vegetable. The freeze-dried food is then ground into a fine powder without adding any additives, fillers, or extracts. 
These powdered foods are then mixed in our proprietary blends and encapsulated, locking out air and moisture. The capsules are then bottled and shipped directly to our customers. Balance of Nature is now offering the freeze-dried food is then ground into a fine powder without adding any additive, fillers, or extracts. These powdered foods are then mixed in our proprietary blends and encapsulated, locking out air and moisture. The capsules are then bottled and shipped directly to our customers.